Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with uh, Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in stormy but still beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. It is March 31st, man, the last March 31st in 2021 we'll ever see. And boy, this quarter is just flying by fast here. Uh, take a look at this weather here, too. Man, it's uh, 78 degrees. I, I think uh, our uh, spring months are over. We don't have a winter month in Florida. Uh, all we have is uh, a spring and summer. So I think our spring is officially over. It looks like the warm weather's coming through here. We might get a cold day or two, but uh, no less. I guess boating is out of the question. Looks like there's going to be some heavy winds this week. Maybe surfing. Who knows? We'll see. Well, we're not here to discuss that, as I always say. My meme today was economic recovery. That's a joke, right? Uh, and I mean that too, because uh, uh, we've been touching on this subject here for the last uh, uh, few weeks, and actually, you know, over the year, I've kind of touched on it a couple of times about the economic recovery, what that's going to look like, and how that's going to affect gold and silver and precious metal prices in general. And uh, I do want to go over this real quick because uh, what I see here happening—the excellent article too—we're uh, going to touch on right here: financial capitalism, the end game. Uh, I want you to read this. Uh, a new site that I discovered uh, through us. Uh, Hedge is uh, uh, via Renegade, and I like it. They have all kinds of different opinions and narratives on there. Again, one of the beauties I like about ZH and some other websites, including this new site, Via Re Renegade, is that uh, they offer different opinions and different narrative. I am so sick of the corporate narrative, the single corporate government media narrative that we have to hear on a daily basis. I'm just sick of it. Uh, so I'm always looking for uh, new sources, new thought processes, new opinions. Uh, and and uh, I think that's real important. Uh, but before I go on to uh, this article right here, um, you know, what I was talking about over here is economic recovery and what that's going to look like. Uh, just in a nutshell, before I go on to other stuff here, I want to explain uh, how kind of a simple analogy or kind of how I look at it. Imagine before the, the virus, co-virus, imagine that there was such a time before the co-virus. Uh, imagine uh, before it uh, that uh, uh, we had... Uh, uh, you know, economic times weren't that bad. 2019 uh, wasn't a horrible year per se. Uh, you know, on the surface, it wasn't a horrible year. You know, we had, uh, you know, it's 11 years past 2008, obviously, 2019. We had 11 years that we've gotten uh, 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 through without having any major calamity, er, calamities, uh, calamities, uh, calamities uh, in the economic system. Uh, however, if I'm correct, uh, 2019 in October, where there were some major, major issues with banks and uh, my understanding of repos. Uh, you can uh, you know, uh, read more about that uh, uh, just by typing it into your browser. But in 2019, uh, the Fed was in some more big trouble, hot water. I believe some banks, uh, major institutions were in some major hot water and, and, and were about looking for a bailout until 2020 came around and the bad cold got us. Uh, so the bad cold comes around uh, that kind of puts a damper on everything across the board uh, but again i'm kind of going to give you a uh, analogy and the way i view this whole thing is imagine you're in your car and you're you know you're, you're, you're the top speed you can go is 100 okay so you're you're in your car uh through uh the the 90s and stuff like that and your car you're able to test your car out and you know its top speed is almost 100 miles per hour and that's the economy so consider the economy's top speed was 100 miles per hour during our lifetime since the night you know during you know since the 1970s or 80s uh top speed's been 100 so we have had times when we've had our car up to 100 miles per hour or let's you know the economy i'm, I'm calling it the, the car so we've had the economy up to 100 miles per hour a couple times in the past so we know what our economy will do in, a, in good times or supposed good times when things are running well. All right. So this car that we've had up to 100 miles per hour it hits 2008. All of a sudden, it goes to 10 miles per hour. It looks like the world's going to end. And what happens? The Fed comes in. And instead of uh, 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 changing what they did, they just doubled down on stupid. Now, someone else liked that uh, uh, comment I made yesterday about double down on stupid. So what did the Fed do in 2008? They doubled down on stupid. They didn't bail out the people that time. They just bailed out banks and big corporations and, and uh, the elite. Uh, that's who they bailed out. Uh, they, they left the people hanging the bag, but the, holding the bag. But, the, uh, you know, we, we did well, and for uh, uh, we did okay, given the uh, uh, scenario there. So from 2008 to 2009, things 
you know, there was a lot of holes in the dike, and the uh, Fed keeps plugging the holes with pumping out new money and uh, QEs, QE1s, QE2s, QE this, QE that, uh, you know, hidden uh, uh, funds given to certain banks. You know, because remember, they, they don't have to tell anybody what they're doing. Uh, so the Fed was able to keep the whole thing afloat from 2008 to 2009. So our car was probably doing, you know, we've been in the 100 mile per hour in our economy car before, uh, but our economy car now from 2008 to 2009 was probably creeping up from 10 miles an hour to, uh, let's say, back up to about 70 miles per hour, uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe 75, but again, only for a certain segment of the population. Uh, the poor seem to be getting poorer at this point after 2008. They seem to get hit the worst in 2008 out of everybody. I don't think they benefited all from all that Fed money uh, too much uh, going up until uh, uh, 2019. So, uh, you know, we get our car up from 2018, our economic car up uh, to about uh, 70 miles per hour in 2018. 2019, um, it appears like we were about to hit a bump in October, and then all of a sudden, boom, the bad cold hits, the 2020 bad cold hits. All of a sudden, our car is back down to 10 miles per hour, all right? Uh, we never got up to full economic speed ever after 2008. They just kept pumping more uh, uh, gas into the tank uh, just to keep you going. And uh, uh, they kept plugging more uh, holes in the uh, wall of the uh, uh, the dam. Uh, and uh, uh, so, you know, the most we got our cars back up to, except for the elite who was able to borrow that cheap money, you know, they got their cars back up to 100 real quick. But the average Joe in America probably was up to 70 miles per hour at the most, you know, uh, in 2019. Uh, again, before the big cold hit, big cold hits, all of a sudden the economic car is barely doing 10 miles per hour again. Maybe, uh, might even have been less than that, five miles per hour. The, the car is just barely, barely crawling. So what does that have to do with economic recovery? Think about it this way. Uh, this is how the media and the government is going to spend the economic recovery. They're going to take the job reports that you're going to see coming up here shortly. They're going to take all the economic data that shows Shows, because we're probably driving about 30 miles per hour, 20 miles per hour. Uh, Florida is actually doing very well economically, but uh, most all the states and all the other countries are shut down and closed down still. Business has not recovered, except for a few states and maybe a few countries uh, that have made uh, the smart decision uh, to uh, uh, keep business going. But uh, meanwhile, uh, it, most of the country is, uh, the economic car is maybe going, what, 20 miles per hour right now? Uh, but we're going to build up, we're going to build up, and we're going to get up to about 30 miles per hour or maybe 40 maximum, and they're going to call that a recovery, folks. That's what's going to be a recovery. And of course it'll be a recovery, but a recovery to what point? A recovery back to the point where we were actually a prosperous country? A recovery to a point where uh, we actually you know, had just enough money to survive? Or a recovery to uh, where it's really a meaningless, just a bullshit recovery, where the patient died and came back to life, and they call that a recovery, even though the patient will probably die again soon. That's kind of what we're looking at here. We're looking at a car that's barely going to get an economic car uh, that is uh, probably going to barely get up to 30 or 40 miles per hour, uh, uh, even though at one time it could do 100 miles per hour. And uh, they're going to call that a recovery, folks. And uh, they're going to spin that as a recovery. And what that's going to do, and it's going to affect precious metals somehow, is the media and everyone's going to come out, make a big hurrah, how job reports are way up, uh, how people are spending more money. Well, of course they are. The patient was dead. The patient's alive. They're going to eat something now. Uh, so uh, that's what they're going to call recovery, and that's my opinion, and that's why I am saying this economic recovery, or what they're going to call an economic recovery, is really not. It's a big joke. It's just... Uh, it's just uh, a little higher numbers than what we were used to seeing. So anyways, don't want to go off on a rant on that. I already did. Uh, financial capitalism, the end game. Gosh, you know what I don't like about this? I don't like sounding negative. Uh, I don't, you know, it, and these reports kind of sound like negative today and yesterday. Uh, not too keen on that. But however, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. And uh, uh, the truth is, is we got to know this stuff. This is how we profit on gold and silver. If, if we go in and we believe that, uh, we believe the media and, and uh, uh, officials and uh, the talking heads uh, and government telling us that uh, uh, everything's okay now, everything okay. Look, look, uh, uh, you know, job reports are up. Look, this is, you know, you got to put it in perspective compared to what? You know, that's the question you need to ask. Uh, recovery? Well, what are you comparing this recovery to? Are you comparing this recovery to 2008? you re comparing it to 2019? Or are you comparing it to actually when our economy was thriving at one point and our economic car could do 100 miles per hour? That's my point. 
so let me talk about this financial capitalism uh, article. Really good. Uh, found it at ZH, but ZH doesn't write this stuff. Again, it's, they're like a blog, uh, you know, like a, a, a news hub or a, a blog hub of sorts where you can read all different types of... Uh, see, if I click via Renegade, it looks like it's a pretty cool website with some uh, uh, different... Uh, uh, opinions and different uh, uh, writers out there that you're not going to see in uh, uh, typical corporate news. Uh, financial capitalism, the end game. I like this article again. Uh, in 2008, we had an opportunity collectively to reboot a broken financial system so it became fit for purpose. But instead of reconfiguring finance to serve the real economy, politicians and central bankers used quantitative easing, easing to buy time, which lulled the mainstream media into reporting that everything was back on track. Some people haven't bought that story. Uh, two of these people, Mark Frederick and uh, Matthias, uh, Matthias Week, I think it is, are two economists who didn't succumb to the groupthink after the 2008 crash and now see financial capitalism's endgame. Um, and a couple things they talk about here. Let's kind of go over a few things. Uh, again, I don't want to read the whole thing because I'll be here forever. Uh, but we're at the end game because it's the final bubble. We've got the government bond bubble and there won't be another bubble afterwards. And that's exactly what we've had since 2008. They haven't fixed anything, folks. They just got band-aids on the economic car and got your economic car up to 30 miles per hour or 50 or whatever it was. Uh, uh, but, you know, fixed? No. No. Uh, it will just burst because last time China and all the states rescued the world, they won't save us anymore. We use cheap money like a drug. We just put more and more drugs in the system. Well, that's exactly what we've done since 2008, folks. And this is good for gold and silver and precious metals. Um, really good for gold and silver and precious metals. Uh, what? But again, you're going to hear and you'll probably see metal prices get monkey hammered or stay low here for a little while. That's kind of my prediction because, again, we're going to start seeing data that suggests that we are recovered. But if you really look at the data, we're not recovered. We're just a dead patient coming back to life. Uh, and uh, I guess that's a recovery of some sorts, but recovered to a point of, uh, of being a successful, uh, 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 thriving country? No freaking way. Uh, so anyway, economists and politicians have learned nothing in the last decade. Rather, they have merely bought time. The banks who created the last financial crisis continue to be the big winners. This is exactly what we've been talking about for some time. Uh, the losers are the working class and underclass who are encouraged to borrow recklessly. Absolutely freaking true. Uh, this is a great article, folks. Uh, you need to go to ZH and uh, or just type in financial capitalism, the end game. Wonderful article. Uh, it's on the Via Renegade site. Uh, I couldn't find it listed there because it looks like they kind of scroll through a bunch of different articles, but uh, definitely worth the, uh, uh, worth the read. And maybe I'll try to hit on one other thing down here. Let me shut that phone off. Sorry about that phone, folks. Uh, over the past two years, real estate prices exploded and the share prices exploded. Lots of people earn a lot of money and a lot of people can't afford living anymore. Well, there's a lot of things that go along with uh, uh, rising real estate prices. That includes rising rents. But if you don't have rising, you know, if people aren't making more money to pay those rents, that's a bad situation as well. Um, I'm not going to go into this whole article again. Uh, I really hope that some of you will uh, type this in, Financial Capitalism, The End Game. It is on Zero Hedge, which you can read for free as long as you don't mind their annoying ads. Also, when you get there, I recommend clicking that via Renegade Inc. site. I haven't had a chance to myself, uh, but uh, take a look at some of the articles on there. They look pretty cool. I'm sure I'm going to start uh, uh, adding them to uh, my list here. Let's take a look at Zero Hedge real quick and just go over the headlines. Nothing I'm going to read here because I spent a lot of time on that last article. Uh, crypto flashes crash overnight. Um, Goldman joins Morgan Stanley on the Bitcoin wagon. Well, again, folks, as I've been saying over and over and over, um, you know, unless you know how the Bitcoin game is played and how they rig it, I'd stay out of it completely. Uh, the big whales are in there, and the whales eat the small fish. And I'm sure you're sick of me, uh, sick of hear hearing me say that, but it's true. Uh, when you got Goldman in there and Morgan Stanley, and you got BlackRock, and you got all these other people uh, getting into Bitcoin, uh, their whole purpose is to take your money, and they will do it unless, unless you know how the game is rigged, like we do with gold and silver. I'm Unfortunately, I don't know enough about cryptos to be able to tell you how that game is rigged, so I really can't help you with that at all. Uh, let's move along here to a couple other things. The market has 1929, 1987, 2000 written bold blood. Well, I think we are going to have ourselves another uh, major, major economic issue coming up here. Uh, once 
once that the uh, uh, numbers start coming in, GDP you know starts going up, or, or, or our, uh, uh, employment figures start going up, our GDP starts going up. Um, I think that it's going to look rosy for a little bit, and then people are going to realize uh, it's it's not, and uh, in fact, it's not going to get any better. And uh, with the stock market crash or any kind of crash right now. Any kind of a, a black swan event could really uh, just knock this economy back down on its knees. And I think we're going to see that. I don't know exactly when, but uh, uh, that's unfortunately when gold will shine its best. Uh, ADP employment data this point in March, service sector jobs soar. Uh, and again, service sector jobs would be jobs like restaurant jobs and that kind of thing. And of course, you know, as the economy starts to open up here, uh, we're going to see more of that, uh, uh, you know, more service sector jobs open up. But, you know, they're low paying, low, you know, they don't pay much. Service sector jobs pay very little. So how can you uh, be happy? I mean, you can be happy that people are working, but, you know, that is certainly going to help, you know, not going to save the economy by any uh, stretch of the imagination. A um, couple other things, futures, uh, flat yields rise ahead of Biden multi-trillion dollar infrastructure plan. You know, the problem with spending multi-trillion dollars on infrastructure is that uh, how is that going to pay off and who's going to pay for that? You know, half of it's going to be what, free printed money from the Fed, which is just going to cheapen the dollar and the other half is going to come from taxes. No, you know, you, you build your infrastructure when you have money. That's what we should have been doing uh, from 2008 onward, uh, you know, supposedly. But we weren't in good good enough position to build it then. How are we in a, any better position to build it now? I don't know. Sounds like BS to me. Um, really not too much more here on gold, silver, and precious metals. A lot of stuff talking about the 2020 bad cold. Of course, you know, I refer to the bad cold as this right here. Uh um, and that's really about it. I'm going to move along here because, God, I just feel all this negativity right now. And uh, let me move on to a couple other things. Uh, the dollar, <laughs> another negative thing here. Uh, Kenneth Roggett, the dollar's fragile uh, uh, he hegemony. Gosh, I can't even pronounce the word. I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed. I know, I know what it is, I, I, but I, I, I've read it many times. I know the word. I just can't pronounce it. Oh, it gets embarrassing. Uh, the mighty U.S. dollar continued to reign supreme in global markets, but the greenback's dominance may well be fragile than it appears because expected future changes in China's exchange rate regime are likely to trigger a significant shift in the international money monetary order. Well, uh, the Chinese, of course, they're not really happy with this, nor have they been happy with this for a long time. And that's kind of cool. I'm not too happy with our government either. And I'm not happy with the Chinese government. They suck as well. Um, but no less, uh, 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 they're going to kind of go into de-dollarization. You know, we've they they see the uh, uh, they they see it written on the wall that the United States is eventually going to use the dollar as a weapon against the Chinese if they haven't done it already. So the Chinese are going to do their own thing. They're going to de-dollarize, which is going to be really bad for the United States. Uh, so let me read the rest of this. For many reasons, the Chinese authorities will probably someday stop pegging the rem uh, the renminbi renminbi to a basket of currencies and shift to a modern inflation target regime under which they will allow the exchange rate to fluctuate more freely, especially against the dollar. When that happens, expect most of Asia to follow China, which is not good for the U.S. dollar, folks. Uh, in due time, the dollar currently under the anchor currency for roughly two-thirds of the world GDP could lose nearly half its weight. And where are all those gonna dollars go? They're going to come back here to roost, where they will just make our money even more worthless. Um, and again, that's very good for the price of precious metals, gold, silver, and platinum. Uh, I guess that's why we're talking about this show, not to talk about politics or economics. We're here to talk about what benefits gold and silver and precious metals. So if you wanted to know why I've gone off on this rant here for a little while, that's why. God, two rants in a row for the last two days. Sorry about that, folks. However, um, you know, at some point we're going to see the Big Bang here, and the Big Bang is going to be the uh, implosion, explosion, whatever you want to call it, of the uh, equities market, the Dow, the NASDAQ. You know, we're going to just see another 2008 type uh, uh, environment happen, except it's going to be on the, uh, uh, my God, it's going to be on the level times 10, times 100. I can't even imagine what it's going to be on. Uh, again, great time to own gold, silver, and precious metals for sure. Uh, best deals out there right now, folks. Uh, if you're paying more than $5 an ounce, and again, I am having a harder and harder and harder time sourcing uh, gold and silver bars. 
Um, I mean, bars are available out there, but coins are not available out there for any reasonable price. There's no mint products out there available for any reasonable price. At this point, I'm telling all my customers, uh, all my local customers, all the people that I deal with, my friends and my family, I'm telling them all to stick with bars right now. Uh, other than U.S. 90% silver coin, which is still available and you can still buy for under a five dollar premium per ounce uh, hopefully well under that but uh, uh, we got it for sale starting at four dollars an ounce over spot uh, and this is the only coin made by a mint which is the u.s mint made this that is available for under a five dollar premium right now in any types of quantity that i'm aware of uh, and, and the same thing applies to uh, uh, silver bars if you can buy silver bars and you can pay five dollars an ounce or less for a premium on them um, that's the best deal out there uh, I don't suggest paying any more than you have to on products. So, you know, if you're paying five, fifty, six dollars, seven dollars, eight, twelve dollars, which is ridiculous for Silver Eagles, for Maple Leafs, for Libertads, or whatever it may be, uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, just buy the bar. I know they're ugly sometimes, and a lot of you don't like it. That's actually a pretty uh, picture I, uh, from some stacker online. But uh, uh, between the ninety percent and the bars. Um, I recommend them. Don't buy uh, anything over $5 an ounce per premium right now. Uh, Why you can still buy bars and you can still buy 90% less than five. Uh, if you're paying over five, you're just paying too much. And again, folks, you're just buying silver. It's, you're going to stick it in a dark place. You don't display it for everyone to look at. So who cares if it's you know ugly looking? Who cares if it's old and gray like this stuff? You know, again. It's under $5 per ounce premium, and if you're paying more than that, you're just paying way too much, and that's my opinion. Same thing with gold bars right now. Uh, if you're buying gold eagles, if you're buying gold maple leaves, uh, maple leaves uh, uh, buffaloes, uh, uh, you're buying even Krugrands right now are, are too expensive, in my opinion. Um, Right now, the best deal out there is gold bars available in, in some kind of quantity. While they're still available, you should be buying these, and they're they're less than the premium is less than a hundred dollars an ounce. Uh, so they're typically going to be like uh, seventy to a hundred dollars over the price of gold per ounce, depending on what bars you're getting and where you go. Uh, but again, still a better deal than paying one ten to one fifty to to two hundred over. For uh, uh, a one ounce gold coin uh, like maple. So, bars are the best deal out there, except for uh, silver, where a constitutional silver coin is available for under $5. But still, when it comes to gold and silver, bars are the best deal out there if you can get them under $5 for silver and under $100 an ounce for gold. Uh, we have them in stock here. I'm actually out of gold bars and silver bars, and uh, believe it or not, right now. We got a little bit of 90 in stock. Uh, but I can supply the stuff. I have a good source of it as of right now. That could change tomorrow. But as of Right now, I can still get this product for less than $5 per ounce. Uh, we are on pre-order on a lot of this product, unfortunately, right now. However, uh, you know me. I've been here a long time. I've uh, been doing this for 40 years, and I've been in this location since 1995. So don't hesitate to pre-order with me. I've got a good track record. Well, let me go over the uh, 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 comments from yesterday's uh, uh, video. We got a lot of views yesterday, and I really appreciate all the views out there. And if you're new to this, I appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and that little bell right there. And the like button is kind of nice, too. It's nice to know that people like what I'm saying. Uh, my report yesterday was Make Pretend World. Um, I guess that struck a nerve on a few folks here. And uh, I'm just kind of saying it like I felt it yesterday, folks, kind of like I did today. Um, let me go over the comments yesterday, and I'll kind of breeze through them if I can. i got a lot of comments here, too. I'm going to have to uh, skip a few uh, let me go through uh, Gabriel P. Uh, Gabriel Martini uh, Martins uh, might have confused me with uh, cryptos, uh, saying people will definitely be kicking themselves in regret for missing opportunity to buy and invest in cryptocurrency. You know, I'm sure that's true, sir. I really, uh, uh, I'm sure that's true. I have no doubt about that. Unfortunately, though, I just don't know that game enough well enough to play it. And I have no doubt in my mind that if I invested in cryptos, I don't know much about it. I don't know how that game is rigged. I don't know how it's manipulated. Uh, and if I played that, I'd end up losing money. I'm pretty sure of it. I know my gold and silver business real well so i'm confident in what i'm doing and i'm confident i'm going to do very well with this stuff and again it has a, a really a track record of five thousand years uh, but when when it comes to cryptos i don't know that much gabriel and i'm really sorry about that i'm sure people that know that business are going to make money but it won't be me uh, at least right now 
Uh, hey, Mas uh, Master Sensei, thanks for watching. Uh, make pretend assets is worth more than any hard tangible assets, even with hard assets being necessary for make pretend to exist. Uh, I guess I got to wrap my head around that statement. I'll have to come back and read that later. Uh, dumb things you see. Thanks for watching. Uh, Chess Master, new guy. See, you made a few comments out there. Thank you very much. Free gold either way. We win. Spot prices are bullshit. Yes, I agree 100%. Uh, Savoy Truffle, trading dollar bills for crypto is like le leaving one hideous woman for another hideous woman. Oh, it's kind of a different analogy. Uh, I like the analogy. We're all making analogies. Uh, I made analogies with a car in the economy today. Uh, Jim C., isn't Bitcoin make pretend? Oh, I don't want to go into too much. Uh, hey, Jim, thanks for watching the show anyway. Uh, uh, Glenn Allen, let it rip potato chip. <laughs> I haven't heard that in 20 years. Let it rip potato chip. Uh, Michael Fernandez, I'm mad as hell. I'm not going to take it anymore. Uh, I'm sorry, Michael, man. I, come in and I'll give you a hug. Uh, you don't get mad. I know my reports the last couple of days seem like they're dwelling on negative stuff, but you know we got to look at that negative stuff because that's what's going to uh, really help us in the gold and silver markets understand this market better, and uh, it's going to make us money. Uh, Bo Merchant, good morning to you. Uh, Chess Master, there you are again. Let me see if I can get some articles uh, asking some questions here. I'll answer the ones that are asking me questions. Uh, Undisturbed Kingdom, do you think they will pull it down to 1660 gold? Um, I think it's completely possible to monkey hammer it at, down to 1660 on gold. I mean, we're, we're not too far from there right now. It'll be like early morning markets. I'm not sure we'll see it in New York, uh, at New York during the day, but it's possible. Uh, however, uh, you know, then all of a sudden the premiums on gold are going to be just as high. I mean, you can't buy gold even at the 1680, 1690 level. You couldn't buy it at 1700. You couldn't buy it at 1750. You couldn't buy silver at $27 an ounce. How is these prices going down? You know, it is just pure monkey hammering and manipulation of the paper markets. Nothing more. And this tells me that the real winning play on this, we know how the game is rigged, is just keep buying physical metals. Buy physical silver, buy physical gold, get your friends to do it, tell your family to do it. Just buy as much as you can. Stick it away and don't worry about these down days. Just look at it as an opportunity to buy the freaking dips. Uh, Jay Gill says, someone was arguing with the other day when I said the real price of gold and silver is the physical price. Uh, I don't know. Well, if they're arguing with you, they're not too smart about that, sir. Well, everyone has their expertise, and obviously your expertise in that uh, particular subject is better than theirs. Uh, that's my opinion, Jay. Uh, they told me that if that's the case, why aren't these online bullion dealers paying more than $2 over spot on silver eagles? Uh, that's actually a good point. And I think what people are forgetting here is that this is real physical product. These are real people that have to buy and sell this physical product. Um, if, you have, if you have to go out and, for example, if you got a fall on market and all of a sudden demand backs off a little bit and you're paying 4 and $5 over for Silver Eagles, even though you might be getting $7 over for Silver Eagles, uh, uh, you, you could end up really losing money on that. So the spread, uh, online dealers are paying $2 over spot. That's abs abs absolutely correct. I think the spread on this stuff right now is plus $2 for Silver Eagles. And I believe the, the sell price is, uh, oh my God, let me see if I can find my sheet here. No, I guess I'll have to read you the uh, dealer prices tomorrow on tomorrow's show. Uh, but uh, yeah, the spread is pretty high right now. But again, product is not available out there. Uh, and even considering a $2 buy price on Silver Eagles, if dealers are paying spot plus two dollars on silver eagles and silver's at let's say twenty four dollars an ounce, that still puts silver at what twenty six dollars an ounce? Am I correct thereabouts? So your your friend actually proved your point there. Uh, if they were paying four dollars over, we'll put it at what twenty eight dollars per ounce, and they were paying four dollars over not too long ago. Um, and as they mentioned here, they don't have any problem charging ten bucks over spot for them, implying that people are just suckers buying into the hype. I gave him an earful back. Um, yeah, it's a little complicated trying to explain to someone why the dealer buy prices are plus two and, and then plus seven. But again, the, it's a real product. Someone has to hold it. And someone, you know, if the markets drop, someone's going to hold the bag. If demand drops out, someone's going to hold the bag. So I think a lot of times that, that lower buy price is just people covering their asses kind of a little bit. Or they may be filled up on uh, uh, metal at the time. Um, at least that's my take on it. Uh, Psycho Killer Crypto absolutely is make pretend money nailed it uh, lucky winner thank you brian for boldly speaking the truth well at least i think it's the truth uh, hey thanks for watching uh boy i'm gonna kind of skip through a few of these i gotta thank all you folks for watching james usher uh general exterior um uh butter beans boy i like that name wasn't that the name of a, a mma fighter at one time uh onza de Plata, greetings from gdl uh jealous uh 
Jalisco, Mexico. I like the way you explain things so easy. Thank you. Uh, understand. Thank you. Hey, yeah, thanks for watching, sir. I really appreciate it. Uh, Gene Knight, someone who talks common sense. How refreshing. Uh, thank you, sir. And I believe I like to, I like to think that uh, uh, it's not that I'm just talking common sense, that people like to hear common sense. That's the reason I've got people actually listening to me, that people like to hear common sense. And there's so little of it out there, it seems, uh, at least in the corporate world. Uh, Judy M says, doubling down on stupid, one of the best quotes of the day. Well, I didn't make it up, Judy M, but anybody that wants to use that word doubling down on stupid, you're welcome to use it in your daily language. I'm sure you'll find you'll be using it a lot when you watch corporate media and you, and you hear some of the things that come out of some people's uh, mouths. Um, but really, hey, Judy, thanks for watching. Oh, boy. Gosh, this was a little bit longer than I expected this show, but I really appreciate everybody watching. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Call me anytime at 954-493-8811 for uh, quotes on precious metals or the deal of the day. Happy to help you out. Uh, again, we're open 10 to 4, Mondays through Fridays. We're brick and mortar store only. We don't do any online sales. We don't sell over the phone. Uh, so if you don't live in my area, I recommend you find a local uh, coin or precious metals dealer uh, that will meet or beat uh, the major online sellers uh, prices and for us we do that I beat my local guys pretty easily and I'll beat all the online sellers as well uh, but that's really about it thanks for watching have yourself a great day and if anything crazy happens in the day I'll do another video if not back tomorrow good day